Corner. I'm Michael. And I'm Sammy. And so we're talking today about traveling with dogs. And this was a pain point for me this week. So um, <laughs> our lifestyle is pretty much someone is always home with the dogs. So we very rarely go anywhere where someone is home. But this particular time, both me and my wife had to go somewhere and we knew we'd be gone for about five hours. So the next question was... We had the kids situated, but what do we do with the dogs? Um, I have left um, in the backyard before, and we happen to have a lab that thinks we're inside. <laughs> so he incessantly barks at the back door and drives the neighbors crazy. So it's not. Didn't out. they call you and you came yes. home? Yeah. And one time we were we were like way out of town. <laughs> we were weren't in, couldn't be back for like mm, two or three hours, and I said, you know what? I just gave him my garage code, so if you don't mind, let him inside, and then he'll stop barking. So, um, yeah, that doesn't work. So, and then we have six-month-old puppies. So, what do you do? So we hauled them all with us and took them where we were going for five hours. Uh, so, I'm wondering, yeah, if you don't have family that's close that's willing to take the dogs, yeah, it's kind of hard because you don't want to leave them by themselves for very long. Yeah, because, you know, that's not cool. No, that's not cool. If we leave Daisy alone, she gets, um, like, sad that we are gone. Depressed. Depressed. Yeah. And she, like, won't eat breakfast the next day and stuff. It's like a whole Yeah, it's like, thing. you left me. Yeah. Why did you do that? Are you going to do it again? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. But we're very fortunate to have family close by who encourage her to come over. So yeah. I have no like idea. But then, like you were mentioning, you might move, like, maybe an hour or so away. Maybe longer. Happened. Yeah. So that would be. I think the 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 solution is just make connections with lots of different people that are willing to take them for a few hours, and then you have got to be willing to reciprocate that when they need it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about making relationships with fellow dog lovers. Who? Yeah. Who, who have good dogs? Wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to make sure they have good dogs. Yeah. <laughs> who wouldn't mind? You know, watching your dogs for a few hours. The other option I thought of, which I haven't looked into too much, is a house sitter that would just kind of... Come hang out and watch your dog. Hang out with the dogs, yeah. I used to do that for... Um, it was like a family friend. I didn't know them very well, but the way I like got involved with their lives was they were going out of town, and they had a, three big Dobermans, and they just needed someone at their house to feed them and just be there with them at night, and so I yeah. did. I went. Yeah, I need to do that. Check into that, and uh, it wouldn't need it very often because there's not many op times where both me and my wife leave, and then none of the kids stay at the house either. So, because sometimes we have a babysitter that stays with her, and thankfully she's okay with the four dogs. <laughs> you could probably find like some like teenager even who just wants to make you know a little yeah. extra cash. Just yeah. Go stay at your house and make sure you put some food in your fridge. And... Yeah, yeah. So, because, like, what if I went on a week's vacation? That's, you know what I'm saying? I have a friend I who... I'm not a big fan of boarding them. Because no. the last time my, um, Lad came back from boarding, he he acted like he was scared to death. Oh, like something could have happened or something? Yeah, I don't know. But he's kind of a weenie anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, the other day at the dog park, this uh, there was, like, a healer. You know, mm -hmm. healers are smaller, and he's 85 pounds. That healer got a little snippy with him, and he just rolled over on his back and just laid there and was acting like he was scared of this little bitty old healer Aww. dog. And so I'm like, get up, Jackson. You're twice the size of – three times the size of that dog. He thinks he's a baby, like yeah. a tiny little lap dog. Yes. He crawls up in the chair at home, and it's way too small for him, but he – he had, can't be comfortable in it, but he's just sprawled out in the chair there. That's he's hilarious. Amazed. Yeah. And so, what? Any other thoughts on like, like, say you go on vacation, you 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 got it made. You got your mom will take him. Grandma, yeah, go to grandma's, grandma's house. Yep. Yeah. And well, she loves going to grandma's house. Right? She does. Um, <laughs> she's not welcome inside because she immediately goes to the pond. But they have a garage, like they. And if it's too cold, they make accommodations with like a heat lamp and stuff. Oh so it's gosh. like they are grandma. That Spoiled is what they are. Dog. Yeah. But um, as far as like a border boarding place, I mean, 
Uh, I've always taken Daisy every now and then to get her hair cut places, and it's always taken a really long time. Um, well, this last time I took her, apparently they let all of their staff go and hired all new staff because of unethical things that were happening. I don't know what That's those wild. things are, but all I know is it used to take like six hours for her to get her hair done, and then it took two. So it really freaked me out. And so what in the world could they be have been doing? I have no idea, and so now I'm like, I, I feel like I can't trust anybody. Were they dog while you're gone? And then... I have no idea, but now I'm like, I can't trust anybody with well, my they dog. couldn't sell it, so I guess we'll brush its hair and give it back. Yeah, I mean, and she looked good. I mean, she looked just as good this last time, mm-hmm. so... yeah. It was just very strange. Is it by the hour or is it just... No, it's not no. by the hour. It's like, it's a set rate thing. Like, you pick what you want done to your dog. And I always like to pick three, you know, and they yeah. like trim her nails and all this stuff. I've never had a dog at a groomer. Well, it's weird because it's like, they they only do, like, they do face, feet, and fanny. And then they, like, grind her nails and they do, like, clean her teeth and stuff. I don't know why that took six hours before. I just thought maybe they would like it behind or something. But they let all their staff go. And they only have a couple groomers now. And they're hiring some more still. And it only took two hours. Huh. Really weird. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, so now I'm like, nope, don't want my dog to go anywhere unless it's a yeah, family. Yeah. If I have a choice. Right, for sure. So eh, I'm still debating on what's the best, but... Um, it's a situation and that's like one of the things I talk to people that don't have dogs and one of the main reasons they don't is I want more freedom to go on vacation yeah I'm like well now I guess all my vacations are going to have to be dog friendly hotels and <laughs> well I know uh, like before my in-laws got their new puppy um, they were talking about how well they want to be able to travel and stuff like that but you can tell that it was just a completely different household without a dog because mm-hmm. their dog passed away early yeah. in the year yeah and so we told him, we were like, listen, any time you go somewhere, you know, we'll watch your dog. And right. then, you know, if we move, they have neighbors that are more than happy to take oh, their dog right, in. Sure. So it's an ideal situation for yeah. them. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. not everybody has that. So you just need to know. find people you trust that are willing to take the dogs. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, if you are a dog lover, you're probably hanging out with fellow dog lovers. For and sure. so yeah. you probably have resources. You just need to ask. Yeah. Don't be a weenie. Yeah, don't be a weenie, ask. <laughs> don't be Jackson. Okay, so like um, I, another thing is I was reading an article from Karen Becker. You know who she mm-hmm. is. She's a, I guess, a holistic vet, more naturally minded vet that puts out, um, it's almost daily little tips about dogs. So check it out. It's uh, mercolapets.com, I believe. I'll have a link in the Thing. Uh, talk notes is what yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, she had the 10 most commonly mistaken mistakes even dog lovers make. And two of them are that I remember that is the teeth and the nails. Okay, tell that, me. That, like, if you don't take care of them on a regular basis, that they can hurt, you know, they can hurt their feet when they're walking and stuff on the nail part. So, you, how often do you take it with a groomer? Um, well, Daisy, her nails, um, she hardly ever goes to the groomers just because it's kind of expensive. So it's yeah. only like when she needs her like trimmed up mm-hmm. for sanitary reasons. Um, so maybe every three or four months. And then nails wise, um, I've taken her in just to get her nails done before. But it's like if I can hear it, it's a problem mm-hmm. is like the way I think about it. On the hardwoods, yeah. yeah, but we look at her feet all the time because she hurts her feet all the time. Mm-hmm. But she she's a border collie, and she runs, and she jumps on fences, and she runs through rocks, and she will run until her heart is content, which is always. Quite a while, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so she'll get cuts on her feet and on her little beans. Yeah. They'll be, like, peeled and stuff, so yeah, we do lots okay. of, like. TLC on there. Oh, yeah, balls. special balms and stuff on her feet, like. So, like, I'm a huge <laughs> dog lover, but, like, the teeth thing. I when I switched to fresh food, you know, before when I was using kibble, I would notice tartar on their teeth, and I'd get the toothbrush out and rub. Yeah. But she's saying, brush them every day, regardless if you see tartar or not. And like the, when we had them with the vet, they said these are the best teeth I've seen in a long time. Do you brush them every day? I do not. I don't. But the article was saying that's one of the mistakes that us dog lovers make is not brushing them every day. So uh, we brush Daisy's teeth, and I want to say like once every two weeks. Yeah. 
I do probably once a week. Yeah. But or, okay, so maybe just a little bit more toothbrush. Yeah. I know last week. I have four dogs, so I didn't really want to hear that. No, that's a lot of teeth. Like, yeah. Daisy's one mouth, but let me tell you something gross. So, last week, I was on the phone with my mother-in-law, and Daisy comes up, and she just starts licking me, which is really sweet. She, like, never really does that, you know, especially when I'm on the phone. I should have known. She was telling me how sorry she was. There was kitty litter all over my neck. Oh, my gosh. She got into the litter box, and so I immediately am brushing her teeth because it's so disgusting, and there's kitty crap in her teeth. Oh. Guys, it was in the toothbrush. <laughs> it was so gross. Ew. Yeah, it was well, a gross uh, time. <laughs> my, we have two little beagle pups, six month beagle pups, and they, you know, their noses are like astronomically good. Yeah. They found a dead squirrel and they were gnawing on it. Ugh. And then it was like petrified, you know, it's like yeah. it had been squished, it had been run over in the road, and then like it dried onto the road, and they <laughs> grabbed it and were carrying it around, gnawing on it. So. I don't think it had was like putrefied or or it did, I didn't smell it or anything, but they obviously did. Yeah. But they had been gnawing on that, so I got the toothbrush out. Yeah. But they're wiggly little boogers; they're hard to brush, brush their, their teeth. teeth. Yeah. yeah. Daisy knows now though that after you get your teeth brushed, you get a special treat, and so that's exciting. Yeah. Because now she's like more like, oh yeah, okay, I'll stand here. So most of the other stuff on the list, like they talk about feeding the, that the feeding a fresh food diet, that most. People don't do that, make a mistake doing that, because I really noticed a big difference in that they, their teeth are cleaner, mm -hmm. um, they itch and scratch less, mm -hmm. um, what else? Just overall, they have more energy. Daisy used to itch all the time, and uh, then, I mean, and even the, their hair, their softness yes, the, is completely like different. Like the black lab, it's almost like she's sh he's shimmering. Yeah. His, so his coat is. Dave's so, hair is nicer than mine. Yeah. For like sure. it's so soft. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, uh, what happened the other day? Um, hold on. I'll remember. Continue. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say something else about the fresh, fresh food. food. Yeah. Oh, um, we like we thought she was like normal weight and everything, right? Well, then we look up the average for a border collie and. She was like way past that, and so she's lost a lot of weight since she's done the fresh food. Oh yeah, and our dogs are called Trimmer and less yeah. bloated, and that that's what I was going to remember. We remember we went to Grandma's house and yeah. they feed regular food, and they have it on the back porch. Well, the puppies just found it and mm -hmm. were just scarfing it down, and they got into the kibble. Uh -huh. When they got home, they were so bloated. They looked yeah. like little balloons. Their yeah. bellies were all poor baby, and they didn't, and they were whining and crying and. They just did, didn't feel well. Every time Daisy because eats they're not, a lot, they weren't used to that. When she eats a lot of dry food and yeah. she gets into it, it's, bloated. Yeah, yeah, and she's cranky. She will growl at you. <laughs> like if you like want to cuddle or anything, she's like, "No, don't touch me." Yeah, because she's just her tummy hurts. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so those were some of the mistakes that even people that love dogs make. Yeah. Of course, people that don't love dogs probably don't have one, but well, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, we've talked about that. Okay, so um, <laughs> interesting thing happened at the dog park the other day. Ooh. Yeah, uh, we, I had the little puppies there, and it was cold and rainy, so we were the only ones in the small dog park. And there was one person in the large dog park, and she went to put her dog in, the, in her trunk, and she took the leash off, and it bolted. And it actually got out on a, like a major street. And I was like two, 120 yards away. I could see it all happening, but I could, there was nothing I could do about it. This dog was running on a street where cars are just running back and oh. forth. And then there's some trees there, so I couldn't see what happened, but that dog went back behind there. And then you could hear like tires screeching, like someone putting on their brakes. Did they hit it? They did not hit it because she hit? finally got it and got it back on the leash, but... I almost saw a dog get run over, but that's terrifying. Yeah, so and then that happened to me. But I was in a field. My black lab likes to chase cows. Yeah, and so I always try to have it on a leash. So I was loading it up in the trunk of the van, and I took the leash off and let go of the collar and said, "Get in." He bolted and ran the other direction and was chasing the cow. So. He normally behaves perfectly fine at home, but he would not even come to me. 
So oh my I had to chase him. I was sprinting. Of course, this dog can outrun me. Easily. Well, he's got four legs. You only have two. <laughs> <laughs> so here's this chubby guy trying to chase down this in the prime of its life lab. That was hilarious. <laughs> so finally, it got the, the cow was on the other side of the fence. So it finally got to the fence, and it's like. He's like, oh, I want to play with you. You look like it was a black cow. So it's like, you look like a bigger version of me. Yeah. So anyway, so I finally grabbed his collar and got him under control. But, oh, man, he was not listening. And that's not him. He usually, he's the one that minds the best. So hmm. anyway, cows are his thing. Yeah, he, he loves he to likes chase them. them. They're big puppies. Yeah, so, but that can be dangerous out in the country. Yes, it can. They'll shoot your dog. <laughs> yeah, it sure will. But anyway, that's been our adventures for the week. Oh, uh, the uh, beagles are trying to be uh, counter surfers. They're trying to get... And they no! Can't, they can't reach. So they're just... They're uh, about 20 pounds now. And they just stretch out up on tippy toes, trying to get up on the counter. And like they stick their tongue up there and start trying to like if you had a something there like butter. Uh-huh. They're like trying to get their tongue on the butter and lick the butter and Oh how cute. They're all stretched out and they, they'll stand on their hind legs and try to reach and they can't quite reach. And then Jackson walks over and just stands up there and yes. eats it. <laughs> yes, he's definitely the king Snapper. counter surfer. Yeah. 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 Oh man. So we've had a fun week. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Two weeks, I guess. I know uh my my mom, she's get she got a swimming pool put in and all this, and so they're building all this other stuff above ground or uh, uh, and below in ground. ground it, oh, it's awesome. done, and, and now they're building a cute little cook shack for the grills and everything. Oh yeah, sure, like a little outdoor area. It's really cute. That's awesome. Um, so they uh, moved uh, this fence that's always there. It's always there, and it's it'll it'll go back up, but it's just not there at the moment. It's like just a normal um like a wire fence, like for like a Chain livestock. Line. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah like gotcha. that. Not barbed wire, but like, anyway. Yeah, I know what um, So about. it's not there. Well, Daisy always runs this fence, okay? Oh, that's like her thing, like she's... Well, all day, she was running the fence that wasn't, wasn't there. there. <laughs> and then it was like, I get there, and my mom's telling me about it, and then she, like, maybe she was listening to us, I don't know, but then she realized, oh, the fence isn't here, and like walked past it, and then would like run that fence, like a different fence. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> She runs a lot. She's got lots of energy. She really does. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good for her. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, the other day she was protecting us. Uh, we were on the porch because it was nice, finally, for the first time in a long time. So we were sitting on the porch, and an airplane was flying by. But it was like, you know, one of those ones that's really far away, so you just see the smoke. You don't mm-hmm. even hear it. Yes. She was barking ferociously and following that smoke until it was past our porch. It was a long, long five minutes. It was so long. Yeah. She would. She didn't want that to get you. Huh? I guess not. I mean, she barks at like birds and stuff when they go by, but no, this little streak of smoke in the sky that was barely moving. She was telling us all about it. Okay, you want to make sure you're aware of it. Yeah. Oh, I got to tell you about Scouts. So Scouts are one of our six-month-old beagle puppies. So she's figured out if she howls at night, someone will come let her out of her crate. Because it's cute. Well, it's cute, but not at two in the morning. No, it's not. So she's bored, I guess, and she's not sleeping. And so she, instead of just curling back up and going to sleep after, because typically I let them out about 11 to do the business for the night haul to sleep through the night. And Zipper, the other one, no problem. He'll, she'll sleep through the whole night. But Scout gets bored, I guess, or whatever, and starts howling at 2 in the morning. You know something awesome you could do? What? Lavender oil behind okay. your ears. I'll on give a shot, man. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, <laughs> my mother-in-law's new puppy is a puppy, right? Lots of energy. Little yes. schnauzer. Little oh, Henri. Mini schnauzer? Yep. Oh, kind of very, very uh, yippy? energetic, feisty. Not necessarily yippy, but she does a cute little bark howl thing that is really cute. Okay. But she's just very high energy. And uh, I remember our um, friend Lori was telling us about the lavender oil. So I put it on her ears and she like took a nap. And then so now they use it at nighttime. Oh man. Uh, she passes so out in okay. her crate okay. all night. So all right. Yeah, so sign me Rubs them on her ears. Well, they got big ears and beagles. <laughs> well, it takes like a drop. And you're I like, know, Ooh. I'm joking with you. Okay, anything else? 
Not that I can think of. Okay, so uh, on our next podcast, we may have our first guest ever. We're, we're excited about it. We'll fill you in on more details later. All right. Sounds good. Anything else, Samantha? Not that I can think of. Okay, we're signing off, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.